Hey guys, how's it going? Captain Foley here. Um, time to talk about episode three, People of Earth. So, let me just um, do something here. chat. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Um, looks like we got a super chat already, which is great. Um, let's see how we can do. Uh, we have 44 people watching with 47 likes. That is amazing, guys. Now 53 people watching. Um, awesome. Thank you very much, guys. That's very much appreciated. Um, I want to know a general consensus in the chat what you guys thought of this episode. Uh, good, bad, or meh? Um, I'm not really sure what to think about this one. So, um, Olivia Julia is still showing in the first super chat of $5. This week's quote, cake is eternal, Michael Burnham. Absolutely, cake is eternal. Um, so, yeah, there's a few quotable lines in this one, actually. So the real question is, what will Jill's name be tomorrow? I think it'll be cake is eternal. She might be here tonight. I don't know. Um, Dale Sexton, is this still happening? Is, is what still happening? Um, <clears throat> Stress Free K, Mr. Raven, were you relieved to see Earth looking uh, so healthy? I'll bet behind walls. Um, I certainly was happy to see Earth looking the way it was looking. Um, Starfleet Academy, or whatever it is now, the government HQ, I guess, um, looks good. I think it's a pretty good look. Um, and I didn't see any Discovery shuttles, which was great. So, awesome job. Wolf Spain Network, I think Xenophobes is is if you're not like us, we hate you. And isolationists is we don't care as long as you do, what you do as long as you stay away. Yeah, there is a difference there for sure. And Earth is definitely um, isolationist right now. Um, Stress-free K, I guess what I was saying is that people like us tend to be neighbors. Okay. Uh, Fleet Paw Swift back. Um, it helped that Frakes directed it. Yeah, this was a Jonathan Frakes thing. It definitely felt um, felt kind of Star Trek-y. Um, Stress-free K, Earth clearly kicked the Federation out because it was tired of being the bullseye in fear of uh, the other, which is why they shoot first when the Titan needed, when Titan needed help. Yes, um, they do make a point of saying that Starfleet um, was basically a target and that uh to protect earth they just they decided to move starfleet so <clears throat> hold on a second i gotta yell so just so you guys are aware quiet Fucking teenagers uh, Whiterium, big bala boom in the Star Trek universe during the burn. Uh, yes. Uh, BJ Turon, Titan is a moon of Saturn. Earth shrank their defense perimeter pretty small. Mars is either its own planet or still on fire. Uh, yes. And I guess their long range scanning abilities isn't that great because they spore jumped pretty much just to, uh, at Saturn. Um, which, you know, it's not far. So, and I did go from Saturn to Earth pretty damn quick. You're right, Kristen. Uh, BJ Turin, it was a five. It was okay. It was a five out of ten. Um, Kathy Casey Stewart liked it. Julian, pretty good. Uh, SC Scout guy, I really enjoyed the captain's uh, the captain log this week. Stewart, well, thank you, to SC Scout guy. Um, when it rendered, it didn't render any of the transitions or fades between scenes or between clips, which I don't know why. Um, so I thought that might be very jarring. And I watched it back, and I was getting bored with it myself, so I wasn't sure people would be how people would react to it. But 
Uh, thank you. A lot of people have uh, said positive things about it. Even my dad watched it, and uh, my dad's not really tech savvy, but he he wanted to watch it. So, um, Florida Riddell, good meh. Why Tyrium? It was an okay episode, mainly world building, which is good. Fleet Paw said good. Love you liked it. Vendor good. Andrew said, oh shit, you didn't tell me about the spinning part. <laughs> Jason six six nine zero two dollars. Still no trans warp hub or slipstream drive mentions. No, I love that they mentioned too that the dilithium dried up before the burn, and then they tried to come up with ulterior faster than light drives that were just not successful, which I call absolute bullshit. On, um, I'm actually just watching the end of it now because it's on CTV Sci-Fi, and there it is. They're zooming out. There's the Earth, um, or old Starfleet anyway. So, uh, which was a great shot and no discovery shuttle. So I was happy with that. Pretty good on the Star Trek th themes. So stress free K. Yeah, guys, if you can super chat, please do so. There has been a few super chats already tonight, which is great. Um, if you can't super chat, just hit that like button. We have 114 people watching with 73 likes. I'm sure we can get up to 100 likes. If you can please just hit the like button, that really helps out a lot. Another way to help us out if you want is join the channel. You have the rank of commander, captain, or admiral. Um, it gives you some stickers and emojis and stuff for in the chat. And uh, it really, uh, really helps out the channel on a monthly basis. So if you can do that as well, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you for anything and everything you guys do. Adam Porter, best episode of the season. Definitely feels like a full series reboot this year. It does feel like a full series reboot. And all I have to say, I should have started, I was going to start the episode with a review like this, was the Swede. The Swede is back. He's a freaking cockroach. He's worse than Apophis in Stargate. You just cannot kill that bastard. Who gets my Swede reference? I mean, last week we saw um, another individual. Um, oh, it's Lita. Oh, yeah. Anywho, um, sorry. Uh, this Jericho Earth has a shield now. Uh, 7 out of 10. Sweet, that's Todd from Stargate. It is, yes. Yeah, just seeing the Swede back, I just hate his character in Hell on Wheels. And no matter, every time you think he's dead, he comes back, and he's always a different persona. It's like he's still after um, Cal Calhoun, or whatever the hell his name was. Whatever, whoever Anson Mote played, I just had it. Um, anyway. Yeah, um, he's he's back. He's trying to get Pike. Um, he just overshot by a couple hundred years. Uh, so, <laughs> Andrew Yarnish, is it me or is Tilly really getting fat? What's up with her wild hair too? Well, that's rude. First of all, uh, she wasn't getting fat. She was actually pregnant at the time. Uh, some of the scenes from season three, she's pregnant. Other ones, she's not. At least that's what I've heard. Um, so, you know. That's kind of rude. Uh, the wild hair is a little much sometimes, but with that much of a mess of, of hair, it's hard to deal with that, I guess. But look, there's Lita and her wonderful assets. Anyway, sorry. Jeff, the Swede, Jacobs, $2. Wow, a quick 50, you must be in the mushroom space. Um, yeah, 150 people here, 85 likes. Uh, can we hit 100 likes? I think we can. That's only 15 more people that need to hit like. Please consider doing so. Um, Olivia Julius, $5. How do I get to a, tw a tween to fess up? Feed them some weird mushrooms. She doesn't say tween. Um because actually it's Stamets that calls her a tween, and then Sylvia said, or yeah, Tilly says she was a, uh, a genius a teenager, and then maybe they do say tween for that quote, but I'm pretty sure they don't. But yes, that was a good quote. Chuck A, hi, Captain Foley. Hello, Chuck. This is Jericho. Those bloody astromechs were back, though. They were. They were fixing the ship. Uh, Wolfsbane... 
network, $5. How about that Scooby-Doo moment? And I would have gotten away with it if it was true meddling federation and that Terran dictator. I never thought about that, but that's great. Um, diplomacy takes so long, or so slow. Um, this is Jericho, and it was Todd. Should have recognized the voice. Mark Philip, Earth First. Uh, Sirstus, this is the first episode I enjoyed of all of Discovery or just of season three. Um, Jason6690, we did see some of those future spaceships blown up in the burn flashbacks. Going to need to zoom in and enhance. And I'm sure Trek Yards, the talented guys over there, will be able to do some videos on those ships. I would say tune into them. If you haven't subscribed to Trek Yards, go over to their channel and subscribe. Um, I hear they're pretty brilliant. I don't really watch their stuff because I can't stand the people that are, you know, on there. But um, they do the ship stuff, so there'll probably be some ship stuff coming up. Uh, Sirstis, it's only a 90-minute trip at light speed. What, from Saturn to Earth? Yeah, well, it didn't look like they were going warp one, and uh, they were there pretty quick. Um, Hezraz, the problem I have is that the Golden Gate Bridge would only be around if it had been rebuilt multiple times. Well, yeah, it's like that um, conundrum with the ship. I can't remember what it's called. But if you replace boards of the ship and eventually get all of the, the boards replaced, is it still the same ship or is it a brand new ship? So. Charles June, I thought this was a good episode, but I didn't know that a human and a symbiont could coexist with no issues. Uh, well, I mean, they put a symbiote in Riker, uh, in TNG, and it, yeah, it didn't take, didn't work well. But that being said, this is the future. This is 900 years in the future. Medical tech advances quite a bit, so I'm sure they'd be able to make it so that a human could at least carry a trill for a lot longer, if not permanently. I love how she didn't have access to all the memories, though. That's a nice little, um, caveat to that, so... No real issue with that, actually. Um, I think the medical tech would be advanced enough that they'd be able to, to make it possible. Uh, Matt Decker, view screens, how quaint. But then again, the villains use them with these. Uh, Thomas, that never made sense to me. Starfleet is Earth and the EU was absorbed into it with Archer's time and the Federation isn't only Earth. So why would Starfleet leave? I think they meant the Federation. No, I think there's a differentiation between Starfleet and the Federation there for sure. They make a point of saying at one point, so Earth isn't part of the Federation. And she's like, no, why would we be? Um, so. <sighs> Olivia Julius, $5. I'm glad to see that Philippia Giorgio is now an admiral. It's canon now. It's not, though. She just put on the badge. Um, Levy Smith, I read that the blonde crew member is the same actress as Arium. Yes, that's the original Arium. Because there was two actresses that played Arium. That's the original one. And then they came out with the, the other Arium actress who actually played Arium in the episode where Arium died. And then this one was back in that same episode. So... Dark Lord 016, will you review the Fed ships in the flashback scene... Yes, you'll have to stay tuned to Trek Yards for more. Phyllis um, Jericho, who wants to bet Federation Headquarters is now, is on New Romulus now? I doubt that. Philip Paredes, Paredes, the dwindling supplies of dilithium, kind of interesting. Seems maybe they want to tie into the real life dependence on oil to power things. Yeah even though the lithium doesn't power anything. <sighs> Video Void TV. Dude, I'm sorry, but I found this episode so frustrating. I did too. I have issues with this episode. There's a lot about it I liked. Uh, there's a lot about it that has issues, which I'm sure when Samuel and myself talk about it, we'll, we'll be able to cover those. Um, had a really good thought just going into this. And I can't remember what it was. Something that really bugged me. Um, so it'll be mentioned tomorrow, either during our edited review or our live first or our live um, full review at five o'clock. So um, 
Matt Deckard, artificial quantum singularity drive. Uh, yes. But that's just the power source. That's not... And that lithium is not a power source on Federation ships. So... Dale Sexton, book aye, aye Commander Burnham. Only one eye. We're not pirates. Yeah, that was a pretty good line. Uh, Sirstus, I'm not... I am getting a feeling that what is left of the dilithium was recrystallized and that it that is what blew up. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Mark says, I did like the episode. Still not sure if it is if I like it better than last week's or not, but I definitely liked it better than the season premiere. That I would agree with, yes. Um BJ Turan, zoom out was nice. Good to see Earth in one piece with trees. And a big ass tree, yeah. I mean, some actual trees on Earth. Um, there's, I think the oldest tree on Earth is 9,000 years old. So, you know, it's not unheard of. I think Samuel will probably make a big deal about the tree tomorrow. Um, but there are there is a 9,000 year old tree on Earth. Just look up oldest trees on Earth on Google. You'll find a lot of information about that. So, Potopia, yay, no disco shuttles on Earth. Video Void TV, I'm broke. I would definitely like the vid. Please, dude, yeah, just like the video. That's all I need. Uh, 115 people have liked it. Sorry, 117 likes. 192 people here, which is great, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, hit that like button if you haven't. We can easily hit 150 likes. That's a great way to support the channel. If you can't super chat or can't join or anything like that, just sharing the video around, hitting that like button, button and just you know make, putting a comment is really helpful for the algorithm so if you can please do we're at 125 now which is great um, but i think we can get another 25 likes to get up to 150 so if you haven't hit like hit that like button it's a little thumbs up thing just click the button uh the list of jericho lol i see the same i see i said the same thing about that ftl line what you don't buy it yeah Linner337, Frakes does it again. Really enjoyed this episode. Burnham was really well handled, in my opinion. Plus, I love the final score, though the CGI looked fishy. Burnham was well handled in this one. Um, I love that even Tilly, or not, yeah, even Tilly said you, you, you feel lighter. Um, you feel like something's changed, which I, I really appreciated. I thought that was kind of great um, because it's, it's true. The character, now that she's happy, and she's not that wooden character that we had in season one. I, I, I hope she improves. Um, so. Colin Barry, interesting episode. Wondering where Starfleet HQ is now. Could be on one planet that could defend it. Kronos, LOL. Maybe. Could be anywhere, actually. Neil Henderson, Earth is all on its own. Still can't afford mass. Still can't afford massive yachts. That was a nice ship, I gotta say. Um. Dale Sexton, this could be my favorite episode of Discovery yet. I don't know about that. Uh, the List of Jericho, Swede, that's Todd from Stargate. Hell on Wheels, Heartbreak Ridge, brother. Uh, I do, Dale Sexton says, Hell on Wheels. Thomas, the guy who played Todd on Stargate Atlantis, is your Swede reference. Yes. Um, Paul Sherrod, $5. Hell on Wheels reference, loving Disco 3 so far, have a beer. Oh, I wish I had beer. I don't have beer. I've got ale, though. Ginger ale. And this one's actually empty. So I should go get another one. Ryan K. Curious why Earth seemed to screw over the settlements on the moon. Well, we don't know if there's any settlements still on the moon. They could have been... A lot could have happened in 900 years. Mark says, go back to Lita. Well, she's not on screen right now. Uh, Waterium, Stamets' line of saying that the lithium falling, failing everywhere, being impossible, was great. Like, yes, the characters know something is up to. Yeah, and I hope it's explained well. I hope there's a good reason for it. But positive candor. I love this episode of Discovery, except for the hand, except for the ending, because there was no way that the Golden Gate Bridge should still be around with a giant cruise ship underneath it. I don't have a problem with that. I think that it's it's a iconic enough piece of architecture that they would keep rebuilding it and rejuvenating it. I wish it looked a little different, like the same basic shapes, but a little bit more refined um, and more like even simplistic so that it looked like it's been replaced a few times. That'd be 
I thought it would have been better, but I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, Regs0089, $5. I really like the idea of a post-Federation Earth and the twist that throws into everything. Uh, Kristen M Montgomery, Cleveland Booker, cracked me up when he walks by Saru, all wide eyes and goofy. Um, Hezrez, in times of crisis, the mother country screws over its colonies. Think of the British Empire. Just got up and left at times, not caring about the outcome in the colonies. Fleet Pass Swift back, $2. We hit 100. Nice. We have 100 and or 208 people, which is fantastic. And 139 people, 39 people have hit like. So hit that like button. I'm loving more people. I want to get 250 at least. I'm sure we can get 175 or 200. Um, ow. Uh, sorry, my belt was digging into my gut. Um, one more like to get to 150 uh, likes, which would be great. There you go. We're at 153. Amazing. Can we hit 175? I think so. If you haven't hit like, please consider hitting like. BJ Tehran on Tilly. It's hard to hide a pregnancy in those uniforms. Uh, yeah, those uniforms don't, they're not really flattering for a lot of people. I mean, it looked great on book. It looks great on, uh, look great on Lorca. Um, but for most people, I don't think they would look good in those uniforms. Uh, Marvin R. Droids fixing the ship. At least they're acknowledging the damage from the crash. Dale Sexton, Christopher Hirda has been in tons of sci-fi. Oh, that's the speed. Uh, Sirstus Trekyard, just this season so far. Oh, this, so which do you think this is the best one for just this season? Okay. Uh, Witerium. We also got what looked like a destroyed saucer outside the relay station in the debris. Yeah, that was there in the first episode as well. So, um, this is Jericho. I like the Earth Ref, the United Earth reference Kirk used to introduce himself to people as the United Earth Vessel Enterprise before the Federation was properly introduced. Dave Stelzer, uh, I was half expecting a hologram of Boothby to be raking some leaves under the giant tree. I know, as they zoomed out, I thought when, when I talk about this in the live or whatever, I'm going to refer to it as Boothby Memorial Park. Um, Mark Felipe, uh, yeah, that, that captain on that Trek Yards channel, he's something else. I, I know, I can't really stand the guys. Ship of Theseus, thank you, uh, the Paradon. That's what it is, the Ship of Theseus. Um, if you replace the deck boards one year, and then next year you replace the, the, the heel, and then the year after that you replace the, the, the mass and the sails, if you're replacing it, is it still the original ship after all the pieces have been replaced, or is it a brand new ship? Olivia Julius, $5. That uniform gave me a rash. Yep. Ron Sarna, just finished watching. Loved it. Uh, Joseph Meditz. Uh, if they started with this season and set it after Nemesis and no one would have any problem with the show. Absolutely. We've been saying that all along. Yeah. Uh, Diesel Robot. What are the odds that it's Dax? It's not Dax. Uh, Kurt Mueller. By the time the Golden Gate was probably probably under constant maintenance by dedicated repair bots. Absolutely. Um, now, somebody mentioned the uh, Trills and how long they live, the symbiotes. We're not really sure, I don't think. Um, however, they did make a point of saying she knew that this was older tech. She knew that that was the, the, the spore cube was linked to the bridge. She knew how to access the, and Till even says, you know, it's, you know, especially a, sh a ship that's 900 years old. So they're implying that the symbiote is at least 900 years old to be able to uh, facilitate and have r um, memories of the ship, sh of ships like that. Sure, she can't necessarily access all those memories, but subconsciously working with the symbiote, she would be able to do a lot of things just naturally. So Jason, O, oh, um, great episode discovery coming into, into its own. Finally, in my opinion, Saru officially becoming captain is one of my favorite moments in the series and maybe all of Trek, uh, man, the man earned it. Yeah. And the first real alien captain that we have had and Jason, O, oh, just so you know, 
after you mentioned Chinese food the other day on my live, I had to go get it. If you watched today's captain's log that came out earlier today, you'll see that I actually, because of you, and I mentioned you a few times in the episode, went and got Chinese food. So thank you. And at the same time, because it cost me money, but that's okay. Uh, the Bagney channel, any chance the symbiote is Dax, that would be awesome. It's not going to be Dax. If it's Dax, that's too contrived. Hezraz, it could be. I think I heard symbiotes can live thousands of years as they get larger. This is Jericho. I thought she was a trill to start off with. Must have been the hair getting confused for spots. Uh, Darth Maul, Trek Yards, was Tilly's tree the same tree from Picard, whose initials and girlfriends were all styled at Starfleet Academy? I uh, thought I saw some engravings on pullout. That sounds dirty. Um, I don't know. I, it, it's a distinct possibility. Um, Alexander Corbin, at Discovery is All a Dream. Defiant, Mr. Raven Productions, oh dear, Discovery Hater, who are we talking about? Dave Stelzer, cake is eternal. <laughs> Ron Sarna, I am glad they kept her around. Olivia Julius, $5, I heard a puggy. Well, the puggy is right here. She's sleeping. Defiant, Mr. Raven Productions, Boothby would have been dead for eight, like 800 years. Yeah, that's why he said a holographic booth be raking the leaves. Uh, Ryan K. Annoyed that Burnham seems to go around the chain of command and nothing happens to her. Yeah, it's, it seems to be a typical thing for her. Uh, but how even uh, uh, Saru is like, yeah, the trust between us is always kind of... I forget exactly what he says, but it's like, ooh. Mm. He's a robot. I like those manta-looking ships and the nacelles trailing the ship. The ships were pretty cool, actually. I really loved the helmet um, that he was wearing. I thought it was a cool, cool look. Uh, Sirstus, did anyone else hear Spock over the Admiral's voice? It said, he said, the Federation lives on. I didn't hear that. Um, yeah, so Samuel called it that the, the helmet was actually, like, there's a human under there. So I, I said it was probably not a human. I thought so it was probably an alien, so... Gotta give Samuel props on that. Uh, Dale Saxon, truth, antimatter powers Starfleet ships. Yes. Well, actually, deuterium. Um, but, yes. Eric Casino. Uh, some good elements. Sorry, utility, etc. But still repeating mistakes. Peter Lacaco Saw a lot of future Federation ships explode early on. Hopefully you catch the designs. Yeah, don't worry. We'll, we'll do our Trek Yards thing. DJ Tehran, I thought transporters couldn't go through shields without Chief O'Brien work around. This is also eight, well, 900 years in the future, so Discovery shields are primitive by comparison, so no problem there. Blue G6 Demon, dilithium is kind of like a fuel injector, making sure the matter-antimatter combusts at the right ratio. Absolutely. Kilo Wolf, I really enjoyed this episode. I just wish they could see, I've seen something of the Federation. Cirstus. Um, I listened to it a few times. It was Spock, Nimoy's Spock also. Okay, I'll need to listen to that again. Grid Cube, the episode felt like it really tried to be an episode of Star Trek, but as its discovery, it just felt fake, but still one of the most Star Trek-y episodes of Discovery so far. I think Star Trek is a good way to describe the episode. Um... I wouldn't say it's one of the best episodes of Discovery. I mean, I think a lot more from season two stand out for me, uh, just because of Pike. But, mm. yeah, I don't know. Dale Sexton, I still think the Omega Particle is going to play here. I, I definitely don't. Um... Matt Mon, the lithium isn't the power source, but if it's like a focusing lens, then any ship with the warp core on would have had unfocused warp plasma, the natural sources burning through. That's kind of sketchy. Yes. 
Mark says, one thing that bothered me was that basically Burnham was like Saru could be captain because she didn't want to be. Ron Sarna, where in Ontario did they film that tree? Certainly not Iceland. Um, it was probably a CG tree. It was a little bit big. I don't know. I don't know where they would have filmed that. Uh, Grid Cube, hey, there's a lot of botonic, botonic science. If people in the future can't keep a single symbiotic tree alive for a few thousand years, why are we, why are we here? Uh, Dale Sexton, the world's oldest recorded tree, is 9,550 years old. Spruce in the Dar Darala province of Sweden. Sweet. Daniel Schott, maybe we, maybe the can, maybe they can use their lithium, lithium like in the TOS episode. Now that was before, yeah, that one you got to give a little bit of leeway to. They didn't have their ideas locked in yet. Jeremy Long, tons of dilithium on Discovery on one set we never saw on the ship before. Love seeing the big water ship going under the Golden Gate at the end. Eric Casino. Casino? Um, Earth has programmable matter, personal transporters, a planetary shield, but has no idea what is happening in their own solar system. Senseless. Well, they don't care. They got the defense system up. They just need to protect the planet. They don't care about anything else. Um, Le Pyridon, the only thing that really derailed this episode was the baddies were colonists from Titan. Really? Even in the Expanse, this is just a drive around the block, and they have not the smallest calm. Hmm. The Pyridon. Make them at least Alpha Centauri, so a founding father world that is actually a lifetime travel away without warp. Uh, Drew L. Starfleet HQ is on Cestus Three. T. Reed True, don't like how Book's ship was big when on top of Discovery. Yeah, that bothered me, that line, too. It's big. It's like, well, it's not Book's ship, then. It's just a red herring line to make you think it's not Book or it's, uh, um, Burnham coming to the rescue. Uh, this is Jericho. Why didn't the Raiders wear... Why did the Raiders wear a mask? Wouldn't it be more sympathetic to them if they knew they were humans? That's a very good point. Uh, Khan cling on to me. We now have belters in Star Trek Discovery. Jeff, the Swede Jacobs. The lithium is like the collector at the top of a solar power plant. The list of Jericho. But did the Earth know that they were from Titan? She seemed shocked when he was human. Yeah, they didn't know. Uh, the guy even made a point of saying the first ship they sent back got destroyed right away so that they knew there was no... They, wouldn't, they weren't going to help them. So, Grid Cube. There was a guy in TNG that killed all the people from a race all over the galaxy in one burst of anger. Why couldn't there be another guy that did make all the Dilithium blow up? Yeah, you're looking, thinking of the episode The Survivors. Killed all Husak everywhere. Ron Sarna, I would be sad if it was, the, if it was Dax. There were more than two symbiotes. Absolutely, I agree. This is Jericho. Dax would be rather old. It may not be around anymore. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Ashley Aaron. I'm hoping that the Trill symbiote turns out to be Dax. Would be a massive shout out to DS9. Mm, it would be too... Too contrived. Uh, Dale Sexton. I think Sarah uses the word together too much. Okay. Well, like, and Ron says, aha, just adjusting his shirt there. Well, I can't adjust my shirt. I want to be comfortable when I'm on my couch. Uh, Gestril, 1980. Notice Disco Yuku uniform shoes have changed to black boots. Didn't notice. Peanut hamper. Shouldn't those quantum torpedoes rip through the Discovery even with their shields up? Well, I mean, two of them knocked their shields from 100% to zero. So I kind of liked that, actually. Um, Joseph Cole, got in late. Could you recap your overall impression? 
My overall impression is I'm not sure what my overall impression is. Um, I didn't hate it. I wouldn't say I loved it. it. It did feel Star Trek, but there was there were a few issues with it. Overall, it was it was in the upper upper marks as far as uh, scoring goes, but not one of the best of Discovery, I don't think. Uh, Thomas, the one thing I needed them to do was if they fought anyone, get their ass kicked, and they did. Dark Lord 016, do you think there's too much melodrama in some of the scenes? I'm seeing the crew crying most of the time and getting self-indulgently sentimental. I mean, yeah, I guess. BJ Tehran, if they paint and repair the Golden Gate Bridge, can still be there in a thousand years. Buildings falling down due to disrepair and war. Acropolis in Athens was still good till blown up by gunpowder in 1687. Very, very good point. Uh, Grid Cube, I was half expecting the Earthers to have light, have a light around and ask why there were Terran from the mirror universe walking freely around. What? Let's do send a quick message here. Hold on. There we go. Um, T. Reed True. Nice shirt, Captain. Thank you. It's Never Say Die. It's a Goonies shirt. Ashley Aaron, who else was hoping for an Enterprise? No idea which letter it would be. 1700-3000, LOL. Uh, I was not hoping for the Enterprise. I think that, again, is a contrived thing that is not necessary nor needed. Please don't. <laughs> we don't need it. We don't need to see the dis Enterprise or a link to everything else and everything else. Just have your own thing that does a thing. I've already linked to the Enterprise with Pike in Season 2, so, I mean, that's all you need. That's fine. I don't want to see a goddamn Enterprise. I don't want it to be Dax. I don't want the Borg to be around. Let's just move on and do other things. You don't need to rely on the crutches of other Star Trek. Uh, that being said, I do like the references. I do like that kind of thing. I don't consider it fan service per se, but there's a fine line, you know? Patrick Williams, Star Trek Discovery is so damn awful that I haven't even watched any third season episodes. It's a shame what Kurtzman has done to the legacy of Star Trek. Legacy of Star Trek is just fine. Just if you want to ignore Discovery, cool. Um, I would suggest checking out Lower Decks because Kurtzman's really not involved with that. And Strange New Worlds, I think, will be something that'll definitely be welcome. So uh, Fleet Boss Swift back $2, 161. Woohoo! Defiant, Mr. Raven Productions, the Oracle of Delphi building is still mostly there after over 2,000 years or so. Uh, the Paradigm, by the way, Ship of Theseus, that's why the historians invented the term replica. Yeah, there you go. BJ Tehran, uh, tr Discovery tries to be emotional and profound, but it overly melodramatic compares to even old Star Trek. It's not natural speech and behavior. Too many speeches instead of pep talks. Okay, hold on. I'm going to yell again. So just a warning to anybody listening with earphones or anything. I have a 16-year-old that's gaming, and he's pissing me off. Quiet! Fucking little shithead. Eric Casino. Dax was over 300 years old at the end of DS9. Chris, it's the same ship in a legal sense, but this ship is just a pile of matter. I know, but it still raises the question, is it the same ship or not? Because a case could be made for both. Uh, let's see. Snoopy McQueen. Captain, me and my kitty cat are enjoying your, your show. Well, thank you, Snoopy. Uh, Tony says, I think she could be Dax. Uh, she could be, but please don't be. Olivia Julius, $10. You want some Mexican food? Have some on me. Thank you. I don't want Mexican food, but thank you. Jason O, I hope it was good. LOL, I enjoyed mine. Well, there you go. It was good. It was very good, so thank you. 
Uh, Arthur Williams, a.k.a. Art Senpai, says, I see doggo. You see two doggos. There's two of them here. This one's just little. Project Achieve, a burn ship in the opening was a disco shuttle with wings. Mm, yeah, similar. We'll have to talk about that at some point. Uh, Jeff the Sweet Jacobs, Taco Bell is not Mexican food. I love Taco Bell, though. Don't get me wrong. Dark Lord 016. Um, I'm in agreement. I have noticed that more in this season. Dystopian guy. By the by, the time they could have found a way to extend the lifespan of a symbiote or transfer memories to a new symbiote, P.S. The Admiral wasn't called Dax, which is convention. True. But, I mean, after 900 years, a lot could change, even even the con naming conventions. So, uh, Eric Casino. Uh, again, Burnham does whatever the plot of the current episode needs her to do. Common sense be damned. Hezraz. I can't remember if it was canon or non-canon, but I read somewhere that the symbiotes get older and they can they get really, really big. They become protectors or something and chill in the pool. See... See, there you go. I mean, I'd, I'd have no problem with that um, if Dax was in one of the pools and there's a reference to Dax. Or you, you, you hear Jadzia or you hear Ezri or she hears something about Dax in one of the pools. I'd be fine. But I don't want this symbiote to be, Z to be, be Dax. And Dale said, yeah, that's the line. Thank you. A trust between us must be assumed. Carl, second Ed D and D, probably my favorite episode. Burnham seems like a totally different character though, which is a good thing because everybody disliked her. Uh, Alyssa Jericho, I heard Nimoy's voice in the message as well. Uh, Sirius at Trekyards, it's about six forty-five. It's when the message breaks up, and it's Nimoy's Spock. Okay, well, I'll have to check it out. Uh, thank, uh, Justin Murphy, thank God for Cockings that we got some damn ship repair. What? Ron Sarna, the truth, the trust talk from Saru and Burnham was supposed to bookend the Earth and Titan story, or at least that is how I saw it. Hooker Unleashed Films, Taco Bell is an explosive diarrhea scene waiting to happen, but it's so good. Linner337, wrong topic, but who's excited for Mandalorian tomorrow? I am, I am. Um, I'll probably be doing, because we do our live react, our review of this episode tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll probably be doing a live Mandalorian first reaction tomorrow night, probably around the same time, 10 or 11 p.m., because um, it starts tomorrow, and then we'll do our full review of that on Monday. It'll be at Mandalorian Mondays, again, on Trek Yards, so... Grace and Peoples, what's with the 21st century style language in disco? Like when Burnham says all the things, like what? Dale Sexton, warp drive in Star Trek works by annihil annihilating matter in, any, in the form of deuterium, a kind of hydrogen gas, and antimatter in a fusion reaction mediated by the lithium crystals. Absolutely. Ashley says, I miss lower decks. Uh, Wytherium, what is going on? Who are you? Don't touch that. Stamets and his OCD. I love it. I, I can totally relate to Stamets. I love Stamets. Uh, John Ford, one issue with the episode is the mention that the lithium dried up. Did they lose the recrystallization technology? It's a good question. It's not clarified, unfortunately. Like, a recrystallized lithium crystals as good as regular or real lithium crystals? It's, yeah, that's something that needs to be clarified. The list of Jericho, the synth line could have been a con continuity error. I don't know if that was a thing in the 23rd uh, century. I don't see why it wouldn't be, honestly. Uh, Jonathan Dola, I f it felt a little like a parody of a meme of Star Trek tropes. Captain Casey Stewart, the tree was CG, Freak said so. Well, there you go. 
Christian Montgomery, it was a CGI tree. Frakes talks about it in the ready room with Will Wheaton. I have not watched the ready room at all, so... Uh, Grace and Peoples, the biggest continuity error for me was the whole mirror thing in season one. The first crossover was when Kirk had the transporter accident, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, but I have no problem with the way they, they did it. it, you know. Kilo Wolf throws in $10. A $10 super chat's amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I think whatever the burn was, it must have been instant. I'd assume unless something went horribly wrong or it was instant that the ships would have dumped their cores when they started to go critical. It was, yeah, it was totally an instantaneous thing. Um, there would have been no warning, I don't think. They sort of exploded in the chamber and then... So... Plutopia, according to the Ready Room interview with Frakes, the tree was CGI and the scene was filmed in a park somewhere in Toronto. Ooh, well, it's just down the road for me, so sweet. Uh, Ron Sarna, I got a nice tree in the yard if they are looking for next season. Uh, Eric Casino, uh, disco writers get a list of cool scenes and are told to make a story around them. Story logic or common sense be damned. Yeah, I think that's the whole case a lot of the times with this newer... These newer shows, unfortunately. Good tea, nice house, throws in $5. It was only a couple of days since the crew had seen Burnham, Burnham and one year for Michael, yet Sarah gives her a crew update like it's been months or years. What the fuck? I thought the fucking same thing. Oh, yeah, the, the, the crew were dealing with it fine. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I we, we literally fell out of the sky, and uh, then I had to, like, leave the ship. <laughs> you yeah, know, how that goes. And then we got saved by your ass. And then you beamed aboard. But from what I've heard, the crew are doing fine. They all miss their own time, though. Like, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I totally agree. Grace and Peoples. I mean, the mirror episodes were probably some of the more interesting stuff to come out of Discovery, but stick with canon, people. Mark Meyer, Kevin Uxbridge, yeah, that's the guy from The Survivors. Uh, Mellow Canuck, too fan servicey. Grace and Peoples, I agree, too fan servicey. What are we talking about specifically? I know I'm behind in the chat, so um, I must have missed something there. Uh, Leonard337, one issue that popped to mind how does the future badges know the difference between opening a comm frequency and asking for a transport? It seems like both require just one tap. Maybe they're neurally linked, so whatever the person's thinking of is what it'll do. Uh, Craig Smith, I dug it, although no Klingon boobs and no cursing. Oh wait, the cursing is Picard. Jo Joseph Cole, Admiral Kidd, they said he was human. I thought Trill and humans were incompatible uh, you Riker. Uh, Joseph, yes, but this is 900 years in the future. Look at, look at how much medical tech has advanced from even 100 years ago to now. Medical tech is one of those things that advances quite a bit, and so I have no issue with them being able to have a symbiote in a human, um, even just with drugs or some way to, to facilitate that. So... Uh, it's the future. Maybe they, there is a way to make a human carrier for symbiote without damaging either of them. Absolutely. Um, Hezraz, I know. As soon as I said that, I thought of a counter argument, perhaps some sciencey thing, but it would rather, it would be a better cause for the burn than something stupid like an attack. Justin Murphy, when Tilly mentioned her family and what happened to them, it really hit home why she's been so effed up. Well, yeah. I mean, they've lived their whole life, life and they had kids and who had kids 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 who, had kids who, had kids who lived all their lives and you're, you literally have just gone into your next day. <laughs> you know, that'd be pretty messed up. Uh, Mark says, I did like when Book beamed aboard and it was like the new boyfriend meeting mom. Oh, I, that scene was cringy for me. It was funny when he beamed aboard, though, and it, like, took, 
you know, it took a second for him to materialize, and he's kind of like, it's old tech, I tell you. Uh, Ryan K, as for the uh, CG or the GG bridge, it was damaged a lot when the Breen attacked Earth in DS9, so parts have been replaced. Absolutely. Uh, Alyssa Jericho, Discovery needs to earn references like the Enterprise first. Oh, that, yeah, absolutely. It needs to earn that instead of just relying on them. Uh, Grayson Peoples, in my opinion, New Trek has been relying on old Trek material for a while and not doing a good job of it. They've been doing a so-so job of it, I would say. Uh, Mr. Pete Channel needs 900 subbies, uh, $2. NCC 1701 Omega in 3189. They had to use the Greek... Max Volume, I thought it was terrific. It was obvious to me that they were trying to reboot the character of Burnham, and I think they're doing going about it the right way so far. I would agree with that. They're definitely trying that, and it is a natural way for them to do it. So, uh, Hezraz, zoom into the tr trill pool. 100-foot-long Dax symbiote living his best life chilling in the pool. An elder of the symbiotes. Yeah, I would love that. Uh, Justin Murphy, TNG sucked badly for the first 2.3 seasons. Sorry, but it did. It didn't, though. We've just been reviewing it. We're in episode, we're in season four right now, and there's some really good episodes in season one and two. So to say that season one and two are absolute garbage is not correct. That's just your brain defaulting to looking back on it going, yeah, I didn't, it. that's the fuck, yeah. It's, it's actually a lot of good content there. So I'm going to disagree with you there. Uh, ben Sun, with all due respect, how can you judge anything without viewing a single episode? I hope you're not talking to me because I've seen everything Star Trek, but yeah, I agree. Damn kids, get off my lawn. Uh, Ron Sarner, the dog was playing video games too loud again. Grace and Peoples, is it just me or has the character of Tilly changed in season one? Uh, definitely changed. Definitely changed. People thought she was too annoying and too hyper, and she was. Um, she's now kind of mellowed out, and I don't really like it. I prefer the old Tilly, but... Uh, mechanics, uh, 1228. I'm not knowledgeable about all the forms of space travel in Star Trek, but what about transwarp conduits? Did the conduits require Dilithium to operate? No, they did not. But you need access to the conduit system. Uh, which does not also rely on Dilithium, so I don't know. It depends on... Like the, the transwarp conduits, um, if you're talking about the Borg ones, you need Borg ships to access that, or chronotons, or whatever the fuck they use to get in there. I don't even know. Um, but you would think there would be different ways like that, absolutely. Grid cube, your body changes all its cells over seven years, and you're still the same person. That's deep. Fleet Pass went back, $5. Foley, quiet. Foley's son, sorry. Foley, little shithead. Yeah, it's pretty much a daily daily thing it's usually quiet sorry don't be sorry be quiet <laughs> that's usually how it goes uh lawrence hogwood uh before leaving i will hope earth will provide discovery major repairs and tech updates i don't think they're doing either um william dyer major Mo millennium falcon vibes when bookship went into the shuttle bay yeah, for sure. And I love how the ship's like reconfigurable, like it's like shrinking to get in the bay and cloaks before it even lands. And then it's like, where did it land? Because there's like cargo containers or crates on the ground. I mean, it's probably fine, but. Justin Murphy, now we know why the captain's chair is in the intro. Yes. Although the captain's chair in the intro is the captain's chair from the Enterprise in season two. Stevie Moore Productions. I'm still laughing at. Sorry, little shithead. <laughs> typical, typical thing. Christopher Bloom. Why would the Earth not send an expeditionary force into outer solar systems to get rid of the Raiders' base home? And wouldn't the Earth still need the resources of the outer planets? I mean, trade. I mean, maybe. And I don't think they knew that they were f 
that's where they were coming from specifically. Um, it's not really made clear as to what, I, like, maybe it is. I need to go back and rewatch it, I guess. But <sighs> my view is that they thought they were raiders from a little bit further out, perhaps, um, and not from within their own solar system. But it could be wrong. It could be wrong. T. Reed True, I hope it's not Dax. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> Dystopian guy, why did Earth not... Why didn't Earth recognize the Titan ship class as human? But they're raiders, so they could have stolen the ships. No real problem with that. Max Volume, isn't the name Tal, not Dax? Jedi Academy dropout, even without warp, there would still be humans all over the solar system. There are valuable resources out there. It makes no sense to only have settlements on the one moon and Earth. I totally agree. Ron Sarna, if they show a Vulcan, it had better be Sarek or Spock or Tuvok or Sarasar. <laughs> Absolutely. You need to. It has to be those characters. Ryan K., I wonder if those ships are so overcrowded. How did two people get their leader off so easily? Well, they, they mentioned that. Like, they have to lower their shields to for book and burn them to beam the dilithium aboard. And then they said, as soon as he drops the shields, we got to move fast. So they, they beam them over right away, and that's when they stand down. So, yeah, I can see what you're saying, but... Hezraz, the little robots from the intro were repairing the ship. Those aren't the robots from the intro. Uh, the robots in the intro are a different, more modernized version of the robots that were fixing Discovery. Because uh, those are the Discovery era ones that repaired the Enterprise too in the last episode of, or the second last episode of Discovery Season 2. The ones in the intro are new ones, which we're going to see probably later in the season. Uh, Jason, six six nine zero two dollars $2. So is the sphere data going to protect Disco or not? don't really know i mean i'm glad that he mentioned the sphere data where he got his information about the trill was interesting um we'll have to see uh xander ass vamp i'm a big fan i love everything star trek too much hate for different star treks just be glad to have it just be glad to have it me personally i love everything including fan films just because everything's star trek i'll take it I'm pretty much the same way. I'll watch anything Star Trek regardless. Um, I'm not one of these people that boycotts things just because I don't understand it or I don't like it. Um, so. Uh, that being said, I won't watch the new Halloween movies by Rob Zombie. Cause I've seen a few reviews and I don't really want to see Michael Myers as a kid. Like... Michael Myers is supposed to be like a great white shark, like mysterious and just a killing machine. Don't humanize him and turn him into somebody that was bullied and um, had a bad family life. So I haven't watched the new Rob Zombie movies. Not that I won't, but I didn't seek them out. So I guess I'm kind of wrong about me saying that, about me just not watching something. Uh, anyway, regardless, at least I learn about it. Marvin R. Odin in the pool would make sense, but the trill human pairing with a symbiote that has experience having a human host. Um, ben's son, one good thing about the time jump is a total breakdown, break in between the 23rd century and the 32nd century, freedom to do something a little different. Dale Sexton, would Michael have stepped aside and let Saru assume the captaincy if she had this year with Book? Probably not. I think that's what they're trying to say, that this year changed her. Tilly said it, you look lighter. Um, Saru said it in saying, you know, I thought I knew you, but clearly I don't because of the decisions you've made and the things you've said. So, Eddie uh, Casino, uh, Ming Na Wen did an unboxing video of a sideshow collectible figure of the child from the Mandalorian. Cool. I got some sideshow collectible stuff on order, actually. Uh, Pre-order. 
Ron Sarna, we get a new story in Trek for once, and people complain. It's not the old, the old ones. People are going to complain regardless of what you do. So no matter what they did, they're going to piss people off. And uh, Ryan K says, and I felt it was stupid that Stamish just gives the stranger classified info without a second thought. He's a pretty smart guy. He figured out that she was the one, like she wanted to be there for a reason. I kind of thought the same thing, though. Um, yeah, giving her all that information was a bit much. But at the same time, I really liked the way he, I liked his character there and the way he did that. It was very much like a dad, like a, a, that dad voice. <laughs> um, Grid Cube, you see, you're all wrong. Dilithium is a fuel and can explode. It's the show premise. All of the dilithium uses, uh, uses from other series are not relevant anymore. I don't even know where to start with that, but bullshit. Harold Chase, I'm thinking it's more a matter of, the, of losing those resources as the Federation shrank. Maybe. Grid cube, ban me if you want, but this show, but for this show, dilithium is fuel. They, they think it is. It's not, but they think it is. Justin Murphy, Samuel ranted that Discovery better needs some repairs all week long, and then there was a scene with the repair bots fixing it. Maybe even your deflector dish fragile fragile probes I, it was funny when i saw the repair bots i was thinking are they fixing the the, the spikes on the deflector because they should be because those would definitely be snapped off and that's how they're going to explain it the next time you see the ship in, per, in pristine conditions like well, those repair bots are doing their job okay fine uh ben son sigh so i've got to give well i call i gotta give Will a call been a while? Will who? Dale Sexton, to recrystallize it a lithium crystal, there has to be a crystal. I think they all burnt up. Yeah, pretty much. Listen, Jericho, what about synthetic dilithium? You'd think they would have that for sure in the future. Um, Grace and Peoples, maybe they never got, maybe they never made a record of the Discovery crossover. Given how awful it can be on the other side, it would make sense not to mention it in a personal log. Yeah, plus you got to think all, everything about Discovery was classified. So Kirk assumed that he was the first person to cross over into the Mirror Universe because he hadn't read the, the logs from Discovery because no one has. Nobody knew that Discovery existed. Mr. Pete's channel says, doesn't the quantum slipstream reactor... Doesn't the quantum slipstream reactor doesn't need dilithium? What? Doesn't the quantum slipstream reactor doesn't need dilithium? I don't know what the hell you're trying to say. My dys dyslexia is making me broken at this moment. Joel Bateman, I would love to see uh, the Q on Star Trek Picard. Yeah, I would too, actually. <laughs> As Sea Scout guy, I want to know why we have not had any more nudity since season one. Because everybody bitched and whined and moaned. Oh no, this is Star Trek. I want to show my kids. I don't want to see the boobies. And ew, cling on boobies. That's why. No matter what, you can't make people happy. Uh, Claude Blue, that is interesting. What is interesting? I must have, like, like I said, I'm behind in the chat and I apologize. Um, 227 people here, 213 likes. That is awesome, guys. Way to go. Awesome job. We can hit 220 likes. Another six likes. That'd be great. Um, William Dyer, we're able to create diamonds in labs now, but they are not the same as the real deal. Maybe the same with the lithium. Absolutely. Yes. Um, artificial diamonds are still real diamonds in the sense that they're the same material, but they don't have the brilliance and the luster of an actual rare man-made or a... Uh, natural diamond um but i hate when people say that diamonds and sapphires and emeralds that are grown in labs aren't real because they totally are they're actual actually the same components to make it it's just not done naturally over millions of years it's done on a much shorter timeline i used to work at uh people's jewelers and um yes yeah, so i know all about diamonds and uh 
the cut, the clarity, the carrot, and the uh, color, uh, the four C's of a diamond and all that shit. So that was a long time ago, but whatever. The Nerd 101. In season th is season three worth it so far? I like lower decks, but Star Trek Discovery and Picard are hot garbage from what I've seen. Then you probably won't like season three. If you didn't enjoy a lot of season two of Discovery, you're not going to enjoy season three. If you haven't watched them, you should probably watch them to judge them for yourself instead of relying on other people. Would be my guess. Brick Shithouse. Trek yards. At least we saw some starships. Uh, then they blew up from the burn thing. Yes, they did. Uh... Tom Gone 3D, what if the Temporal Wars were about getting Dilithium from the past? That would be a nice tie-in. It would be, actually. Um, Eric Casino, uh, three-fourths of the people joyously welcoming Burnham would never have had a conversation with her. Yeah, I'm beginning to see that even... Because I kind of defended that they, they knew her, but you got to think, she was a mutineer... mutineer um, who, yeah, they didn't really know that well. And even Tilly in this episode said, you know, I don't really know you, but I know you, you know? So she even acknowledges the fact that she hasn't known Burnham for very long, and they were fucking roommates, so. <clears throat> Harold Chase, folks, they cussed in DS9 and TNG. They did. Picard said, mirrored. Cerstus, there has to be a limit. Ben's son, true fact, you can meet the most interesting people at a local supermarket. I met Will and Mr. Freely from uh, the Boy, Boy Meets World at mine. Sweet. Hezraz, Ron Sarna, all good. I wasn't sure if you were joking or not. I had wrote something before, but not posted it. We good. Text only gets confusing, but that's why I use emojis. Pug, people can see your tail, but they can't see your pretty face. Come here. Come here. Put your ass in the air. Libby Julius, five dollars. I wonder if trolls have trolls will have spots or ridges. If trolls will have spots or ridges. Trolls. Okay. Oh, trills, trills, trills will have spots because we saw them in the preview for next week, and they have spots. They look exactly like they should. Grayson Peoples, wait. If that's the case then does that mean that they don't record crossovers in the mirror universe either? Then how did the intendant know about the Kirk thing? Trying to see how a mirror disco fits. It's a good question, actually. I don't know. Um, the Bagney channel. I did hear Spock's voice at 6.50 in. As everyone keeps saying. So maybe, maybe it's there. I don't know why it would be. But there you go. Uh, Claude Blue. Do you think there is a technological dark age after the burn? Seems that way, doesn't it? Uh, Grid Cube. Didn't that time traveler guy in Enterprise said that most humans have some traces of alien DNA on, in them? Uh, she could have a great, great grandparents who were trill. Absolutely. Yeah, they did make the point, though, saying that um, there's a lot of genetic material um, because just of crossbreeding and stuff. So. <clears throat> uh, the Bagni channel. It's in $5. I did hear Spock's voice at 6.50 in. Uh, Grayson's people, these characters, these character limits are insufficient. I need more room to express my long thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't set the rules. Uh, SC Scout Guy. Well, in Enterprise, humans and Vulcans could not mate and have a child, but Phlox was able to solve that pro solve that. So I have no problem with having a symbiote. I totally agree with that. Uh, Kurt Mueller. Uh, the burn only makes sense if the lithium regulates warp plasma to create all stable warp fields, regardless of how the plasma is created, whether by antimatter, Romulan singularity, or something else. Yes. Uh, Jason O. It's plenty worth just watch what you want, dude. Absolutely. Uh, Raver Band, $5, just got here. Not sure if this has been asked. Who is the new blonde female bridge crew that keeps getting random close-ups? That actress was the one that played Arium early on in season one. Then she stopped playing Arium. They recast Arium with another actress. 
And then that actress went on to be Arium, even in the episode where Arium dies. And that's the same episode, I think, where the blonde comes back. And that blonde is the person that played Arium originally. So I don't know her name. I don't know the character's name. She's probably got a name. Hell if I know it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the same actress that played the original Arium. Uh, Hezraz, I think the constant recrystallization of dilithium would be realistic for the cause of the burn. The dilithium went dry, so they recrystallize over and over. At a certain point, something goes wrong. It's like, um, it's like the cloning, um, the clone of a clone of a clone. It's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. It just loses the, the clarity, right? Harold Chase, so basically what happened in the Merrier verse happened in the later time period in regular. Uh, so basically what happened in the Mirror verse happened in later time period in regular. I have no idea what you're saying. Sorry. The Rambling Johnny, so nobody bothered checking on Earth and System Colony. I guess not. Grayson's people, uh, I should really use a board with thread connecting the dots. That's how I think, anyway. Ben's son, is it possible the burn was caused by Burnham jumping from a new suit? I mean, anything's possible, so sure. Joel Bateman, doctors are good today. I almost died from a stomach infection. Well, that sucks. I'm glad you're okay. Um, Jason O, the burn happened 700 years after they left, so no. Well, the burn happened about 810 years after they left. Because Book said that the burn happened 120 years ago when she went 930 years in the future. So you do the math, it's 810 years after discovery that the burn would have happened, but yeah. Michael Kukielka. Mm. TNG looked horrible in season one and two, but it had some awesome episodes and are better than most of season seven. Uh, yes, I wouldn't say it looked horrible. I mean, the uniforms weren't the best. Um, and a lot of the lighting was garbage, especially in sick bay and the, the briefing room. Um, so the lighting wasn't quite on point yet. I, don't, I wouldn't say it looked awful though, but I, I can see what you're saying. Mark Mapleback, just finished watching. Seriously, Trills? Uh, yes. Max Volume, yeah, about the first seasons of TNG. That's a bit of the Mandela effect. There are some poor episodes, but overall it's great. Absolutely. Uh, Grayson Peoples, I think Cinnamon Roll Tilly of season one was more appealing. I just, I love Tilly in season one and, and two. Um, so far in season three, honestly, not really a Tilly fan, but it's okay. Uh, Sirstis, and you need to get to an entrance to a transwarp conduit. Uh, Thomas, access to the conduit system, super easy. Just ask the board and get your cootie shots and they can't assimilate you. BJ Tehran, I binge watched the first season of TNG a few years ago and I enjoyed it. There was some good episodes, interesting music too. Absolutely. Ben's son, we got leg, lol. Hezraz, is it okay if they change the characters? Picard was a dick in season one of TNG, then he switched him and the guy we love. He wasn't a dick in season one though. We thought the same thing going in when me and Sandy went to review it, and he's actually, he's Picard all the way through. He, he's not a dick at all. Uh, there's one or two moments maybe where he's a dick, but overall his character's the Picard we see later. Uh, again, that's, you know, you're, you're, you're remembering it 
through like a haze because you know what comes later and like there's much better Picard later. But uh, yeah. Uh, Richie Appel, I can't wait for the Trek Yard's take on the ships shown exploding in the burn, placing bets on which ship Samuel will lose his mind over the most. My money is on the Halo sh sword looking ship. Well, you guys will find out soon enough. Ben's son, they did leave open future visits though. What to Earth? Yes. Grid Cube, I'm sure that book's ship has some sort of holographic cloaking. In the first episode, we didn't see a hole in the water when it disappeared. Suddenly the lake looked exactly as if nothing was there. Yeah, like I, I've said, it's not even like a cloak. Uh, in episode one, I said it felt more like a chameleon, some kind of chameleon cloak. Like it, it, sh it creates an illusion of what's around it as opposed to actually a true cloaking device. <clears throat> Let's see, Albert Nation, I hope they upgrade the ship with new tech and weapons. Yeah, I hope they add some new stuff as well. Uh, Thomas, I honestly love how the uh, United Earth didn't need no man. It's a strong, independent planet. <laughs> Mr. Pete's channel, uh, United Earth is clearly conservative, and as we can see with Earth, is clearly functioning well under conservative values. Don't drag modern politics into it, guys. Like, what the hell? Gonna skip a bunch of shit. That's irrelevant. Grayson's people, which I think they would see as being very imperfect in their voice standards. Okay. Let's see. Richie Appel, I enjoyed this episode, but Discovery is still better without Burnham. Also, I don't like how they're complete completely torn Starfleet Federation down and will remake them in a new in its new image. I know it bugs me too, but it is what it is. Arthur Williams, aka Art Senpai. Remember the cancelled animated Trek show? Uh, its plot was in a meta, mega attack on the Federation. I, I think that's what they got the idea for this season. Yes. And that was a cool enterprise that they were gonna have in that with like a weird like a rectangular saucer section? Would it be a saucer section if it's rectangular? I don't know. Primary hull. Uh, Ensign Ricky, $5. Plot twist. The Borg no longer want to assimilate the United Federation of Planets because it's worthless to them now. Giorgio returns to the mirror universe to find a perfect United Federation of Planets intact. Hezraz. I don't want to see kids murdering... A kid murdering people. It is creepy. This comment will be way out of context, but Rob Zombie comment, Captain. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. I know that was like way forever ago. Awesome. Mark Phillip, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies were not good in my opinion. Yeah, that's what I've heard time and time again, so I'm not really keen on watching them. And I'm a huge Michael Myers Halloween fan. I love that. Um, I even like the, the ones that people say are bad, like uh, Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. Uh, Olivia Julius, $2. Puggy treats for the puggy. And that too. Oh, just, Olivia is giving you money for treats. Thomas, God, I fucking hate how smug she was about letting Saru be captain. Well. Uh, Patrick Lachelle, $5. I feel like we need more background on the trill human thing. Are you hopeful? I am. I am hopeful as well. It is 900 years in the future. It, medical tech had, could have progressed. It could be that she has some trill DNA in there. Who knows? Who knows? There's that lady. I like that lady. Odo's friend name anyway sorry I'm just gonna skip a few I'll, I'll look around and Grayson's people's repair bots is that their explanation for the episodic reset button phenomenon oh probably 
Janet Ling. I was just ready to accept that the good old days of Star Trek are gone and started appreciating the new shows for what they were. And then Lower Decks came. Why, CBS? Why? <laughs> I think that's a uh, sentiment that's probably mirrored by a lot of fans. <clears throat> Dave Stelzer. Can they use trilithium? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Harold Chase. Looks like Earth lost the knowledge if they think think it's fuel, kind of like we forgot the ancients had machine computers 3,000 years ago. Uh, Mr. Pete's channel, didn't we see the Doctor's rear in season two? Yeah, I think we did actually. Species 8470, more Orion boobs. Boobies, what? How far behind in the chat am I? Like seriously. Ron Sarna, no one was complaining about Klingon boobies. Just Tilly swearing. I will disagree with you there. I could remember instances of people saying, "Well, this is a show that I want to watch with my kids because it's Star Trek." <clears throat> I can't watch this with my kids because they're swearing and boobies. It's like relax. There's other Star Trek for your kids to watch. Then by the time they get old enough, they can watch this. This is something I would let my kids watch Discovery when they wa when we were young. <laughs> my kids pretty much watch what I watched as long as you're there to explain things. Um, I don't see a problem with it, but that's just me. That's just my parenting style. The list of Jericho. My issue was that it was Klingon nudity. I don't want to see that. I do. I want to see alien nudity. I want, I've always wondered what a female... Ferengi would look like. We always hear about them being naked. I, I want to see a female naked Ferengi. That's just something that I'm interested in seeing. Chris Veldez. Nothing wrong with Klingon nudity. Can't believe anyone complained, though. You would have to pause and go frame by frame to see it. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Let's say video void TV. Earth leaving the Federation breaks my heart, man. We are a founding. We are a founding member. Uh, we should have been the backbone of the of a post burned Starfleet, but instead we literally built that wall. So transparent. Uh, Mark says I didn't watch all of season one. I miss Klingon nudity. I might have to watch it. LOL. Max volume. Stop it with the no swearing in the future. Bollocks. Kirk just says that 20th century people aren't paid attention to unless you swear every other word. Not that swearing isn't a thing. Exactly. Olivia Julius, $5. Are you still going to be on Trek Culture on Sunday night to discuss the ships? Yes. And it's not Trek Culture, it's Trek Central. Trek Central, not Trek Culture. Totally different. Um, and yes, that's Sunday. It's not even night. It's Sunday e Sunday round... I think it's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and it's to discuss this episode, not specifically the ships, but because there's ships in this episode, they wanted us, us on, so. Uh, Xander's Vamp. What is your opinion on how the season might go? Do you see the Federation partial restoration, or do you think it may be another season to even see a partial restoration? Um... I think it's going to be a while, to be fair. It's going to be like Andromeda. We're going to see a rebuilding of the Commonwealth or the Federation bit by bit, and it's going to come back to Earth, and Earth is going to walk in them and, you know, become the heart again of the Federation. Uh, let's see. That rambling Johnny, if all your ships blew up, Maybe you're a bit nervous about using the lithium, even if you got some. Right? Hezraz, precious, puts her ass in the air like she just don't care. <laughs> oh, Haggins, people love you so much. If we pause for back $2, 231, can we hit 250? Well, we've already hit 241. Nine more likes, guys. Nine more likes. If you haven't hit like yet, consider hitting like. Let's get to 250. Um... And guys, there's a lot of precious in the in today's captain's log that I released earlier. Uh, she's at the beginning of it. She's at the end of the captain's log. 
She's just being cute. So if you want to see more Precious, tune into the captain's log and you can see some dot too. Precious, isn't, isn't that true? Isn't that true, Precious? Look up here, what's this? Look at these people up here. They love you, look at them up here. It's like, Dad, you're embarrassing me. Actually, I'm just embarrassing myself, but that's fine. Three more likes, three more likes, three more likes. Let's get to 250, guys. Um, Hell on Wheels reunion show. <laughs> There's Jill. Thank you. Yeah, Jill, when I saw him, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sakes, it's the Swedes. Seriously. Um, I think the Admiral Symbiote will be transferred to the Adira and Gray next week so we can access the Admiral's memories. Yeah, I think that's what they're going with, too. Olivia Julius, $5. Need more room to express your thoughts? Go to Trek Yard's PayPal link in the description or Fleepa might. Might it it up. Might hit it up. Yeah, PayPal is there as well. If you guys want to shoot a PayPal our way, uh, just let us know in the chat you've done so, and we will read your comment or question via PayPal. Uh, Anthony Green, just finished. I'm kind of bored. Uh, just finished the episode and kind of bored of the episode or bored of me? I can see people being bored of me. I can also see some people being bored of the episode, honestly, but... Uh... Ichiro Sato, did you notice how this season has a Western feel even more so than TOS? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the whole cast of Hell on Wheels showing up. Um, Olivia Julius, $5. Did you see that the lithium had an NCC number on it? Did that mean that the lithium was possibly stolen from a Federation ship? I don't think that was the lithium. I think that was like a, a data rod or something, some piece of evidence. Um, I know she was talking about getting the lithium in the, the, in the uh, talk over or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it was to explore the sectors and get more clues. So she's also talking about clues. So I think it was part of a starship or a, a data rod or some kind of information. It was not a piece of dilithium. <clears throat> Mr. Captain 93, at the end of the season, does Disco go back into their time, making changes to prevent the burn, thus the aesthetic differences in TOS? That would be awesome. If they could fix the way they fucked things up with um, this being prime, and go back in time and fix it, I would be totally on board for that. But I said the same thing about Enterprise with the Temple Cold War. It's like, oh, okay, you're going to correct your, your canon mistakes that are in Enterprise. It just never happened. So I don't really have faith that that's going to be the case, but you never know. Uh... Talking about Sarah Mitch, she's that blonde that played um, uh, Arium. Ron Sarna, I liked Tilly, got a bit jealous over the Trill Girl. Got jealous? Uh, Eros DD, did Data have the most crazy story, craziest story arc? I mean, maybe, sure. Uh, skipping a bunch of comments here, guys. J.L. Young, Ezri and Julian's great, 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 <laughs> Neomix, the new Trill teen is really going to have to help beef up the shields on Discovery. Uh, yeah, she is. Uh, Hell on Wheels reunion show. I love Trek Central. Yay! So Jill will be watching us on Sunday. Uh, Grayson's people's five drones dislike the video. Borg everywhere, I'm telling y'all. You know, people can dislike the video all they like. Usually they dislike because they don't like the show we're talking about or the episode we're talking about or the topic we're talking about. Not because of us, per se. I totally understand why somebody would dislike because I'm talking because I get sick of hearing myself talk as well. And I don't think I'm very interesting. But 
that what they don't realize is that hitting this like button is just as good as hitting the like button because it's an engagement with the channel. It's an analytic for YouTube to monitor and to show that people are interested in our content, whether they like it or dislike it. So a dislike is just as good as a like. I live with Julia's $5. She's so cute. This is the cutest day of my life. Best day ever. Hashtag puggy. Aww. Neo Mix says, I wouldn't be surprised if they gave Michael Burnham the Trill symbiote for a while. Yeah. Michael, can you, like, take this thing? You know, humans. Most humans can't can't access the memories. You're Michael Burnham. You can do it. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pete's channel. Guys, guys, every Trill doesn't have to be Dax. I know. I agree with you. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to call it there. Um, it's been an hour and a half, which has been great. Uh, you guys have really done well and uh, stepped up. We hit over 250 likes. We're at 263 likes with 209 of you watching, which is great. Uh, super chats were great. Honestly, if we could get another $23 in Super Chats would be fantastic. Um, but if we can't, that's fine as well. Um, you guys have done a really great job tonight. I really appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. Um, these these little first reaction videos, yeah, they, I kind of give my thoughts on the episode. But at the same time, I really love reading your thoughts and comments and interacting with you guys. And uh, it's basically just like a water cooler. Um, we hang around the water cooler the next day talking about the episode. Um, you're talking with your favorite Trek Trek, um, Trekkies or your friends um, that are into the show. It's just a fun environment. So, um. anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. So, if anybody wants to throw in a last super chat, um, you can do so. I'd really appreciate it. Olivia Julius currently has the last super chat slot. Um, and she's excited to have seen the pug, apparently. She doesn't care about the chihuahua. Look, or dot, dot, people don't care about you. No, they don't. No, they love the pug. The pug's the cute one. Oh, no, no, don't, don't go away. I'm not telling you to leave. No. Precious. Precious. Say hi to the people. Olivia loves you. There you go, Olivia. Oh, she threw in a super chat, too. Olivia Julia has $10. 10 bucks only if I can see the puggy again. I already did it before you even... There you go. Puggins. Puggins. Squadra Course, $2. Thanks for hanging out with us, Captain. Last. Ah, Squadra Course has the last super chat. Olivia wants to see you. So come see Olivia, okay? You don't have to kiss me all the time. No, no. That'll make, that'll make Olivia jealous. She wants you to kiss her. Because she loves the pug. She thinks you're cute. Oh, what a yawn. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. We don't need to be kissed all the time. Squadra Course. Oh, I said that one already. Olivia Julius, two dollars. She's got the last super chat slot. Sorry, Squadra Course. She scooped you. Four more bucks would be awesome to hit a nice little milestone for the for the live super chat thing. Lisa Pug is waving. Hey, goodbye, peoples. I love you, peoples. Precious. How she just imitate the pug? Hundred and forty nine people are still watching us, Pug. You believe that shit? Oh, oh, yeah, oh. There we go. There. She's like, okay. I'm tired. Broken speaker, five dollars, here's money. 
T. Reed True, five dollars with no comment, but thank you. And Olivia throws in one dollar for the last super chat slot. Thank you, Olivia. All right, guys, we're gonna call that quits. You guys really stepped up with the super chats, and I appreciate that so much. Uh, um, join us tomorrow at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the uh, review, and don't forget to check out the edited review earlier in the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, Saturday, we're going to be doing something ship related for sure. Hell on Wheels reunion show throws in one dollar. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, and uh, tomorrow night, probably around the same time, just keep an eye out for the um, for the scheduled content that I'll probably be doing a Mandalorian um, episode one of season two first reaction tomorrow night. Which the pug might even join me, right? Are you gonna be there? <laughs> Olivia throws in another dollar to scoop Jill. Sorry, Olivia, I'll shut up soon. Um, so yeah, tune in for that. Also tune in for the Saturday release. We'll have we'll have a few videos coming out of this episode for sure. So stay tuned for those, and join us on Monday for Mandalorian Monday, where at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will talk about the first episode of season two of The Mandalorian. <laughs> we'll do a review. So, I hope to see you guys there. So, until then, this is Captain Foley and Yeoman Pug. Are you the Yeoman? You're the Yeoman. Yeoman Pug saying goodbye. See you next time. There you go. There's your blanket. She's really like, Daddy, here's embarrassing me. All right, guys, have a good night. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.